Hey guys, Klaus here, and today we are going to take a look at macros, which were added in Snapshot 23W31A. Macros essentially allow you to generate, make a function get recompiled and be recompiled using predefined elements that were specified from something else in the game. This is very powerful because you can essentially take a number or a string or text or something and insert it anywhere into a command at the cost of a slower function runtime because you have to recompile them. Believe it or not, when you type slash reload, all the functions in your data pack get compiled uh, and there's a certain process it goes through, which if you are going to use these macros, it has to re-go through while you're running it when you type slash function. So first we're going to take a look at the basic macro example, which is inserting a command. So the way that you use macros is you use a dollar sign to indicate this line contains a macro, and then you follow that with whatever you want. So we can do something like execute as at a run. And then if I wanted to make everybody run a command, then I would put a dollar and then I would put a key. So with macros, you essentially have the dollar sign, which means you are doing a macro command followed by dollar with parentheses showing that this is a macro key. And so this key is going to be the custom word that it looks for when you pass it inputs. So you can think of this kind of like passing inputs to a function, but I think macro is a fitting name because essentially you are feeding it some data, it is inserting that data immediately, not passing it as input, not evaluating it. You are inserting it directly and then recompiling afterwards with that insert. And so that's why I just have this line which says run a dynamic macro command and that dynamic command will be whatever one was supplied to us as the input. So in order to do this, we have to do function run command, which is our macro. And then we have to pass it using string JSON format, not string JSON format, uh, with key in quotes, which our key is command, and we put quotes around it, followed by the value of that key, which would be say hi. And so when we run it, it makes CloudWolf say hi. So you can see that this is a way to basically have a command run at any location that you want inside of your function. Next, we can take a look at inserting values. So inserting a value into a command like five, six, 10, whatever, uh, is just the same as inserting uh, anything, uh, the command in the sense that we are just going to create a macro called $x in the place of where you place the damage amount. And then when we call the damage function, we pass and tell it the key X is equal to 5.5. So then we're gonna go into survival and you can see that boom, I do five, get 5.5 damage applied. Next, we have inserting a string or inserting a JSON component. And so you are able to pass JSON components and strings. In this case, we have a macro called telraw, which just runs telraw at P with your telraw message string you want to insert here. You can imagine that this could be used for something like boss bars or player uh, prefixes, suffixes, and custom things like that. But essentially this will just pass high as text and red. So this format is all the same that you would see on a sign. And so we, when we run this, you're going to see that it just applies directly into the chat. So this is really nice for maybe naming custom mobs with little changes to them and all those kind of fun stuff. So with that, that's the essentials of macros. The next thing is how do I make these dynamic? Because obviously I'm able to type this as a user in the chat, but how do I make that 5.5 come from a scoreboard or something like that? And that's a little bit more tedious because you can't make them come from scoreboards. So if we use slash function m colon damage, we can see that we can use with here. And now we can choose either block, entity, or storage. And so these are looking for MBT in block, entity, or storage, which has our key located in it. Obviously, there is no block that has a MBT of X or no entity that has an MBT of X. And so that's not going to work too great, but we can make a storage have an MBT of X. So to set this up, we're going to go data modify storage macro, and then let's go ahead and make this uh, input. And then we're going to set this equal to X with eight. And so once we set this value as a compound here, which as you can see in the chat, I had an error because it didn't set it as a compound, that little thing that we had typed in before can now be the little thing that it reads for here. So we change this to input and do that and it'll run the command. If I run that, it'll do eight points of damage. Uh, so this will allow us to have some dynamic stuff. Now, if you wanted that number to come from a scoreboard, well, let me change this to eight with a integer, right? And then we can do 
data execute store result storage macro input.x int one run scoreboard players set dot damage macro 11. So you can see that this would copy the value that I put on damage. You can change this to data get, right? You can change it to a get after. Uh, but this will take the value on damage macro and put it on input.x with an integer and a scale of one. And then if I do that, and then I go ahead and go into survival and run this again, uh, you will see that I will take 11 points of damage. So you can see that's a lot more. So this is how you can get some dynamic or dynamism in your code using a combination of execute store result storage to grab stuff from scoreboards or data modify to set things from other locations. So then we come to the final command I'm gonna show you, which is a little example of using these. So one example is if you wanna teleport a player into places that you probably can't teleport them dynamically, uh, so if you're in the game, if you want to take a player to certain coordinates, uh, this can work kind of, but it has some annoyances with unloaded chunks. If you want to move a player to an unloaded chunk, you have to summon an entity, copy its coordinates, teleport that entity, but execute as the entity and run a sub function and then teleport the player from a second function. So it takes at least two functions to do this um, without macros, but with macros, we can just TP to X, Y, Z. So we say, use a macro command, TP the nearest player to dollar X, dollar Y, dollar Z. And so now if I click this, I will go to coordinate 100, 1 million 56, one, just like specified as the scores on the right. So let's take a look at how I did that exactly in these commands. They are very simple. So first, what we do is I set the macro input value to X, Y, Z, just like this, so that it looks like this when I call uh, that section uh, with the width score. So this gives me my X key, my Y key, and my Z key as three integers. And this is X, Y, and Z macros that it is looking for. Then I'm going to store on the input dot X, just like we did before, what the value is on dot x macro, and then input dot y is dot y macro, input dot z is dot z macro, and then run tp with the macro input that we started with. And so that will move the scoreboard values onto the tp command, and then run it from there. Boop. Anyways, that's it for macros, guys. I want it to be as quick as possible. They aren't that complicated in theory, but man, they add a lot of complexity to the Minecraft coding system. I know a lot of you are already thinking, I am thinking of a lot of really cool changes to previous works that I've done to make them a lot simpler and run faster. But we will hold those out for now and maybe I will make them in the coming days. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you later. Peace.